Okay, so today we are very happy to have one of my young colleagues to give a talk on our Asian Pacific Analysis PD seminar. And so before the talk started, let me say a few words. Um, uh, Professor Menchuan Ni. And uh, Menchuan received his PhD in 2018 from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And uh, then he went to uh, Los Western uh, as a boss, a senior professor. And uh, then he went as a research fellow at the Warwick University. And in 2021, he came back as a tenure track as a professor at our department. So Menchuan uh, got trained uh, from press, uh, uh, my colleague, uh, D.F.E. Tam. He's an expert on geometric analysis, harmonic maps, and many other things. And Menchuan actually is also expert on geometric analysis and ge uh, complex geometry. Uh, and many, many other things. He's very productive. And recently he got uh, this uh, China's Excellent Young Scientist Award uh, for his research on geometric analysis. So today we are, he's going to talk on uh, rich flow and the pin pinched curvature on nine compact manifolds. So Minchuan, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you for Vestin for, for the invitation and for the organizing everything. So uh, today I will talk about some of my recent work with uh, uh, Peter Topping on which flow and uh, related to a uh, pinching curvature on non compact manifolds. Okay. So <clears throat> let me start with some motivation. So the basic motivation in this talk is to study the following question. So a rough question, but uh, very classical given a complete uh, reminding manifold with a uh, long negative or positive curvature, but under what curvature we can classify the manifold M. Okay, so, but uh, just bear in mind, uh, there are some curvature you can hardly classify many things like the scalar curvature. But uh, let me start with something, uh, uh, some example that we know. So for instance, the uniformization uh, theorem in two dimensional or in complex geometry uh, is one typical example of such question. And the famous defensible sphere theorem uh, also a typical example of uh, such question, or I mean answer for such question, and so theorem, etc. So uh, for defensible sphere theorem, we know, uh, I will get back to this later, but we know if the curvature is very positive, then we know the manifold is different morphic to sphere. And for instance, for example, uh, the source sphere says that the, if a complete long compact manifold of, is of a positive sectional curvature, then the manifold is different morphic to the Euclidean spaces. Okay, so, so today I will mainly focus on uh, this, type, this type of question. Okay, so the, the, the basically the consequence of, I mean, the, the suggestion of all this example is saying, saying that the curvature should be relatively strong, otherwise you can't really classify any things. Okay. Okay. And then, okay, my, my main question today is to ask, okay, suppose we know some topological constraint like the long compactness of the manifolds. I know it's for it. We know the manifold is long compact. Then we ask whether the manifold can support metrics with really positive curvature. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, the, the, the fate, the well-known, a uh, film in this direction is the Bonnet Myers film saying that okay, the Ritchie curvature can't be strictly positive. Okay, if the Ritchie curvature has a lower bound, a strictly positive lower bound, then the manifold must be compact. Okay, and yeah, and and actually the lower bound can be further generalized to quadratic uh, decay. It can't. Uh, in 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 other words, that means the Ritchie curvature can can't be positive. And the positivity, uh, if decaying slowly, then then it can't be true. Okay, and of course, uh, the the source theorem also a uh, typical example of this question. Okay, and then I want to uh, bring up some other direction. So if you have some curvature, and if the manifolds have a decay structure on infinity, like the positive mass theorem. So for instance, if the mass is zero, then we know the manifold is isometrically to the Euclidean spaces, okay? So 
result along this direction uh, can also be regarded as a gap film, which is studied a lot in the past, especially in Kela geometry uh, by the work of Mo Siu Yao. They say they prove that if the curvature is, is if the Kela geometry, the force, the curvature is uh, non negative and the decay is sufficiently fast, faster than uh, scaling in very one case, then uh, the manifold must, must be flat. Okay. And then there are lots of generalization of the most serial sphere. Okay. okay. So my question today is to focus on one and two, but I want to ask whether we have a gap film of the flat manifolds under some palm wise condition, but not a decay condition at infinity. Okay. I want to ask whether we have some curvature notion which guarantees some fatness. Okay, or in other words, some gap theorem which related to palm wise condition only. Okay, but uh, before before we uh, stay the main theorem, let me uh, start with some uh, some result on compact case and get some feeling on what 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 should we expect. Okay. 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 I want to get some feeling on what is the strong curvature that we should we should uh, start with. Okay, first of all, in the compact case, uh, the, the, the uh, sphere sphere has a long history. And then uh, at now, uh, I mean, at that moment, the people are studying the so-called strictly one quarter pinch condition, which says that if the sectional curvature lies between one quarter and one, okay, uh, strictly above one quarter, then they ask whether the manifold is, uh, is the sphere. And uh, similarly, uh, people also study the so-called positive curvature operator condition, which is, uh, uh, to, to, to my feeling, this is one of the strongest possible positivity condition on curvature, okay? And uh, we know along, uh, 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 using under these two types of condition, people study a lot, and then the topological result, uh, topological sphere theorem, was studied by Berger and, and more importantly by McCraft and Mora. Okay. And okay, one more thing is the strictly quarter pinch is optimal because of some uh, uh, symmetric spaces such as this, such as the CPN is it achieved the borderline case of this uh, quarter pinch condition. Okay. So you can think of okay, the, this really strong positivity condition. Uh, tells you the sphere because it's just close up as a sphere. The manifold is too curved such that it's eventually it close up as a sphere. Okay, so so that means that in, in some sense, uh, if you start with a manifold with long compact manifolds, it shouldn't uh, allow such similar condition. Okay, but let me let me say a few words uh, about the previous result first before I. Go back to the long compact case. Okay, so this differentiable sphere theorem uh, has a really important breakthrough after Hamilton. Hamilton, they, he introduced the so-called Ritchie flow, which is a method to deform the metric along the Ritchie direction. Okay, negative Ritchie direction. So at the end, you can see that the stationary point will be the Einstein manifolds if. If uh, there are no singularity, then the uh, stationary point will be the rigid manifold. But of course, uh, it can't be the case uh, usually. But anyway, Hamilton considered the case uh, when the dimension is free and the rigid curvature is positive. And then he just won the rigid flow and then proved that the rigid curvature, uh, sorry, the, the rigid flow returned the metric into the sphere okay, after normalization. Okay. At the singularity time, the manifold will be just like the the spherical space form. Okay. And then there are lots of work by generalizing or extending or uh, trying to uh, make use of the Richard flow to say something more. So for instance, uh, the one, 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 one of the uh, classical results is by Hilskan, who studied the manifold with a, a relatively small traceless Richard curvature and the wild, wild part of the curvature. Okay. That means uh, you, you can think of this as a pinching curvature condition. In some sense, that means the scalar curvature part is dominating the everything, okay? uh, relatively dominating. Okay? And then, uh, and then 
after a long time born and building, uh, study a generalization of Hamilton under the so-called positive curvature operator condition. Okay. They prove that uh, in this case, they can still prove the same uh, dynamics of the rigid flow. That means the rigid flow returns a manifold with a positive curvature operator into a sphere for any dimension. Okay, no dimensional restrictions. And then of course, the, the famous uh, differentiable sphere theorem proved uh, proof by uh, Simon Brando and Vision says that the one quarter pinch curvature condition uh, is also uh, a favorable condition with respect to the rigid flow field. Okay, they okay, but, but they did build a lot build, build on some idea about the important idea of a point and milk. Okay, but they, yeah. Okay, so so these are the uh, compact theory that we uh study study in the past. Okay, okay. So uh. I want to say a few words about Simon Brando's uh, and uh, machine research result. Okay, they, although they proved the defensible sphere theorem, which is stated on one quarter pinch condition, but in fact, they are not considering the one quarter pinch uh, in the method. Okay, they're, they're trying to consider something slightly more general. Okay, uh, this is a condition uh, uh, introduced by uh, McClough, Mikalev, and uh, Mora. Okay. They, co they consider the following case. So uh, they, 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 the reason why they study because of some minimal surface uh, method, but turns out to be useful in which flow, the, they consider the following. If the curvature is uh, said to be a uh, long negative isotropic curvature, so usually I will call it uh, out and inside the cone of isotropic curvature cone. If the compensified sectional curvature is long negative, okay, on any totally isotropic two plane, okay, it's a complex two dimensional plane, okay, okay, it's long negative, okay. There are some generalization of sectional curvature, okay, okay, but but not not exactly sectional curvature because I I we have, we require some some constraint of this plane, okay, and then uh some there are some extension, uh. For instance, if we require the manifold causing with Euclidean space is inside the, the pick, pick cone, then we call it pick one. Okay. okay. The, the easiest way to visualize it is you can just think of this as a generalization of rigid curvature. Okay. If, if, if you are uh, using some certain, I forgot uh, the precise uh, formulation, but with some formulation, you can see that this is exactly the, the rigid curvature in dimension field. Okay, in dimension three, okay, and then uh, people also study the case when you cause it with more uh, Euclidean plane than, for instance, you cause it with two more Euclidean plane, then we call it peg two. Okay. okay, some people also call it the law negative set complex sectional curvature. Okay, you can think of this as a generalization of a sectional curvature in four dimensions. And then uh, the, the famous film by uh, Simon Brando and Vision is the following. Okay, they prove that if, uh, if the closed manifold is of a strictly positive peg one, okay, I, I say in this way so that you, you, can, you can think of curvature is inside the interior of peg one cone. Then the rigid flow will converge to the spherical space form after normalization. So in other words, that means that M, the manifold M is diffeomorphic to the, spe, uh, the sphere. Okay. It's diffeomorphic to the sphere. Okay. okay. In the past, they, they first proved the case of PEG2, okay. uh, which is the main result, main, main result of some brand of ambition. Okay, they proved the case of PEG2, which include PEG1 and also include the PEG. And later on, it's generalized by Simon Brando to pick, pick one. Okay, so when n is equal to three, this is exactly the Hamilton sphere. Okay, Hamilton sphere. All right. Well, so this is the history. And then uh, this particular ex, uh, condition also include the quarter pinch condition. Okay, this is strictly smaller. This is a strictly weaker condition uh, to the than the uh, quarter pinch condition. Okay. 
So, so this gives the a famous fear of a differentiable shear flame. Okay. So now uh, uh, keep this in mind. Uh, so keep this in mind. The, if the curvature is too strong in the sense of pick one, then the Ricci flow will flow a compact manifold to a sphere after normalization. Okay. So we just uh, if you just keep curving the manifold until it's become homogeneous, things like you can think of the dynamic in this way. Okay. Okay. So now we, we ask the same question, uh, but we restrict ourselves to the long compact manifold. So I, I personally like long compact manifold more, you know, just a different favor of, uh, of geometry analysis. Okay. So the question is like, it's still the same if the curvature is positively pinched. On manifold M uniformly, can M be long compact? Okay. So uh, instead of saying uh, stating in the way of only pick one pinch, uh, only only pick one, I say in this way. So by uniform positively per pinch, I mean this curvature, okay, whatever curvature you are imposing, we require the curvature is strictly bounded from below by some small epsilon times the scalar curvature. Okay, the reason why we impose this condition because first of all, this is a scaling invariant condition. Okay. Secondly, uh, for compact manifold, it's automatically true because uh, we know if the if the manifold is compact then and the curvature is positive, then of course we can uh, insert a scalar curvature in between. Okay. Okay. And more importantly, you can see that for long compact manifold, if we uh if we uh impose a con condition without the scalar curvature, then it's automatically trivial by the bonnet Meyer sphere. Okay. Because bonnet Meyer is not scaling in area. Okay. And then uh, the scaling in area structure also allows the curvature to decay slowly to zero. The curvature can slowly decay to zero. Okay. Or not. Okay. It's just uh, more natural when you when you when you work on non-compact manifolds. Okay, and then uh, we we can ask the same question, just like the defensible sphere of sphere, but uh, uh, and then there are some uh, known result. Okay, but they are always uh, working with uh, some additional assumption called the uh, the bounded curvature. Okay, then uh, let me just recall uh, one of them, uh, all of them one by one. So uh, this is one of the result by Xi. I always so, uh, who consider the case of Hughes Ken's uh, paper. Okay, you remember the, the Hughes Ken result is a, is a result concerning the different sphere theorem on trade on small trace subscription and small wild tensor. Okay, you can make a scaling invariant scaling invariant uh, uh, version of it. Okay, and then study further by Chang and Shu. Okay, they prove that uh, under the Hillskin assumption, the assumption considered by Hillskin, if you impose bounded curvature assumption, then the manifold can't be long compact. Okay, otherwise the manifold must be a flat manifold. And then uh, Nady and Wu, they consider the same types of uh, assumption, but in using the curvature operator on the left hand side. Okay, that means the curvature operator is strictly Pinch by the scalar curvature, then if it's positive, then it can't be long compact. It must be close up eventually at infinity. And then Simon Brando and Wickstrand, they they consider the uh, same analog, uh, but they consider the pick, pick two cases, okay, which says that the long negative uh, pick, if M cos with R2 has a long negative. Uh, Isotropic curvature, which dominate by below from below by scalar, then it's, it can't be long compact. Otherwise, it must be it must be a flat manifold. Okay, they, they, so there are variation of uh, this this types of theorem, but under the same assumption of the differential sphere theorem, but with a scaling invariant modification. Okay, so then then you ask a uh, very general question because I want to we want to uh, classify all this manifold. We want to classify it. So of course uh, we don't we don't expect bounded curvature is necessary. Just like the slow sphere, the slow sphere has nothing to do with the bounded curvature. Okay, and moreover, can we generalize uh, all this assumption? 
okay? Just like a sphere sphere, okay? So if a sphere sphere works, we expect the same also works for long compact manifold, okay? Up to the scaling invariant modification. Okay, so uh, actually uh, when dimension is three, uh, we have the Hamilton sphere sphere. And this is a conjecture by Hamilton. Uh, uh, I'm not sure people just credit to uh, Hamilton, but uh, sometimes Hamilton, he, 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 told, he told us that they, he don't remember pointing this out. <laughs> but anyway, they, we, we, uh, this is a conjecture in, in Ben Charles' textbook. Uh, he asked whether if a complete long compact manifold with a long negative PG curvature, which is pinched by the scalar curvature, okay? Then he asked whether the manifold is compact or flat, okay? And then this is a true by a series of work, uh, series of work by John Law and, and the real Shasha Simons and myself with Peter Topping. We eventually prove everything, okay? So you can think of this as a scaling in very, very version of the Bonnet Myers, but on three dimension, okay? And before I, 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 I move on, let me say something about uh, the more idea of this field and why you expect this to be true. Okay. So of course, uh, pinching conditions, if you keep, keep the sphere sphere in mind, you can think of a uh, sphere sphere is like tossing up the manifold as a sphere. Okay. Okay. But the more idea when you turn, when you go to long compact manifold is suggested by John Locke, uh, by the following argument, okay? So pretending everything is uh, good enough, uh, uh, there are some technical technicality on this argument, but pretend everything is uh, good enough. So if uh, you can, first of all, try to blow down the manifolds, okay? Blow down the manifolds so that the manifolds is close to be a metrical by the Chica coding field, okay? Secondly, um, if the manifold, you pre, now you pretend the manifold is the, is the metrical at infinity, okay? And then if it's metrical at infinity, then the which curvature will be vanishing along the radial direction, okay? So if there are some direction, the which curvature is zero, then that means the manifold must be flat because of the pinching, okay? The pinching at infinity is very crucial because uh, there's, there's the, uh, there are no portal structure at infinity or metric structure at infinity. Okay. If it does, then you have the rich flatness at infinity okay, by the pinching condition. Okay, so you know the infinity is like the metric cone. So, and then if you know, for instance, the metric cone is flat at infinity, then you can see that the length of the cone must be sphere because uh, manifold must be topologically Euclidean. Okay, because, because of the uh, uh, work of friction and, and Yao, we know the manifold is topologically Euclidean. Okay, so that means uh, the manifold is flat at infinity, which propagates the flatness to, to the compact set, which force the manifold to be flat manifold. Okay, so, so in this case, you can see that, okay, we are just trying to grab the flatness at, the flatness at infinity and then try to propagate it back to the original manifold. Okay, this is a what idea of John Locke? Of course, modulus a lots of things. Okay. okay. And then, okay, this is, now we know this is true for three dimension. And then we ask whether you can generalize it further and ask what is the correct generalization of the rigid curvature? Okay. What's the correct generalization to visualize uh, this argument? Okay. Okay. So uh, here comes to uh, the main result of myself with, with Peter Topping last year. We proved the following. Okay, uh, we proved something slightly uh, it's similar, but uh, in contrast to three dimension, we require we ask uh, more assumption. Okay. Yeah. So we consider a case when uh, the manifold is a complete long compact manifolds. Okay, so the long compactness is important. We a priori assume the manifold is long compact, unlike uh, uh, some of the stated, some of the gap theorem in the past. Okay, and we consider a case when the curvature operator 
of this particular metric is pinched by the scalar curvature <laughs> and then inside the pick one cone. Okay. So in three dimension, it's exactly the same with, uh, with this assumption. In three dimension, it's basically the same if you formulate in the same way. Okay. That means the rigid curvature is, is bounded from below by the scalar. And then in this case, you can see that the positive, the pick one curvature is dominated by the scalar. Okay. For some small epsilon uniform along the whole manifolds. And we impose something stronger in addition. Okay. We impose something called the pick two, but not pinch, not necessarily pinch. Then we, we can prove that M is actually flat manifolds. Okay. Okay. So first of all, uh what one of the key points of this theorem is we don't rely on bundles of curvature. Okay. Okay. So in the past, uh in the, all the previous work uh, in the past, uh, except the three-dimensional one, so people use some uh uh which flow which relies on bundle curvature. Okay, but in this case, we, uh, we are able to remove it. And uh, one more thing. Okay, so uh, in the previous slide, let me go back to this. Okay, you can see that uh, actually the topological type, the topological type is very important here. Okay, it's very important to classify the length at infinity. Uh, this is a result by Shen and Yao because of the rigid curvature condition. And uh, in 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 higher dimension, I I I don't I don't we don't we have no idea what is the the correct generalization of a Shen and Yao result. So the pick two condition is kind is one uh, one reason why we need to import, in, introduce this. Okay, the pick two condition basically says that okay the pick two condition is uh strictly stronger than the sectional curvature. So that means uh, the, the source theorem here applies to here. And then we know by source theorem, we know the manifold is diffeomorphic to the normal bundle of the source. Okay. But the pick two is even stronger, which is a result by Wilkin and Esther. So they, they can prove that uh, with the pick two condition, the manifold M will speed isometrically, uh, will speed off the source, manif source of manifold, okay, isometrically. Okay. And then the resulting part is F, which is diffeomorphic to Rn. Okay, diffeomorphic to Euclidean space. Okay. okay. That means the normal bundle is uh, in some sense trivial here. The normal bundle is in some sense trivial by the two condition. Okay. Oh, okay. And then uh, let me remark here that the, the pick two is probably a technical assumption only. Okay. Uh, is it, this is this is conjecture by uh, uh Darrell, Simons and Felix. Okay, they, they believe that this is not uh this should be a technical assumption only. Okay, so this is our main field. Okay, but uh now let me walk the outline the strategy and tell you what is the why this is not easy. Okay, so the strategy is still just symmetry flow, as you can see. Uh we 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 are thinking along the line of a uh, sphere sphere. So we try to make use of the same things. Okay, but here comes the hot, uh, difficult part because we are working with long compact, the long compact manifold. The singularity types is not characterized by the curvature only. Okay, this is the key technical part. You, we can characterize the man, the 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 fact the existence time of a long compact manifold. Okay, but nonetheless we, we try to do the same things. Okay, we try to uh, flow, evolve the uh, initial data by the rigid flow. Okay, and of course, try to study the long time resistance and the long time behavior of the flow. And okay, uh, this is uh, some, uh, some, some feature of long compact rigid flow. So, uh, the basic model of rigid flow of long compact manifold is the metric cone. Okay, metric cone is of Long negative curvature, but singular at the at the tips. And then if you run the rigid flow on the metric cone, we just keep contracting. Uh, so what, what is metric cone? Metric cone is basically the, the rescale limit of a metric. And then if you run rigid flow, it's basically 
running the uh, long-rise widget flow on the on regional manner. Okay, and then it's contracting. Okay, if you need to normalize it, so that is it. Uh, yeah, it needs to normalize it. Okay. Okay. So the normalized limit of the widget flow is basically giving you the metric form structure because you can think of if, if you okay, pretending t to be zero, this is the initial data. And then if you let k inverse, uh, uh, if you consider k inverse of g initial data, then this is basically the limit of the metric form at infinity. Okay, it's, this is basically the metric form at infinity. And then the flow here basically says that you are flowing the metric form at infinity. Okay, but of course, initial data is uh, not a smooth data, so so the conversion is smooth away from zero. But this is basically the uh, which flow at infinity. Okay. And then the which flow at infinity should give you the metric structure of the tangent cone at infinity, right? Because this is the regularization of your metric cone. So the if you can study the regularization of the metric cone at infinity, then you should be able to get I information of the original manifold by 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 some uh, by some asymptotic analysis okay so this is a wobbly the strategy but of course this is very rough you can see a lot of problem right now for for instance the first part is even not here okay can can we even recognize the manifolds for general uh, given initial data this is already unclear okay Okay, it's always unclear why you can do the regularization. Okay, okay. mainly because uh, which flow is not linear, a weakly parabolic system, and in fact, it's causing linear. Uh, the the even even the parabolicity depends on the solution itself, so that's why the problem is difficult. And this is not clear uh, even now, but there are some uh, known solution. Uh, for example, uh, the famous theorem by Xi, he proved that the short time existence of which flow, if you assume some boundaries of curvature. So in other words, that means you, you don't have to impose really strong assumption on in, at infinity. The boundaries of uh, curvature already automatically rule out a lot of uh, complication at infinity. And Topping and his uh, previous student, they, they have a complete theory on V minus uh, two dimensional manifolds. So for when two dimension is two, everything is known. Okay. But but this is not uh, uh but but it's hardly generalized to high dimension because they make use of conformal structure. Okay, they make use of uniformization theorem of uh Riemann surface. Okay, and then the result by Esther and Wilkin is another breakthrough in this recent 10 years. They proved that the short time existence is true when you have a pick two condition. Okay, but they don't have a really good estimate. They, they, only, they can only prove a, a regularization, uh, not even a regularization. They can prove a existent theory, but, but they don't have a explicit regularization estimate. Okay, but still a really important result in Richard flow. And there are uh, a lot of uh, progress recently uh, in this uh, three years, two or three years uh, by myself and Tam Hodger, Simon Topping, Lai Yi, and also an result of Wilking and Kabisi, uh, and Esther and Vaima, they uh, all, all of us are considering a uh, long collapse manifold with a really strong curvature condition. Okay. Okay. But this is not our key part today, so let me uh, not emphasize too much. So. Okay. So let me pull out the essential difficulties. Okay, the essential difficulty, as I said, uh, or the first obstacle, not, not, not the, actually, there are lots of essential difficulties, but first obstacle is the short time theory, short time existence theory, because, uh, because, the, the, because we, we only in, impose curvature condition power wise. Okay, so a priori speaking, the, the spatial infinity can be really complicated. Okay. Of course, uh, if you impose boundaries of curvature, the, the infinity can't be oscillating too much. You, you, you oscillate within a control amount, but if you don't have the boundary curvature, everything is very chaotic, so you can't control too much. Okay, this is the, one of the first difficulties. 
And then, uh, in fact, uh, the main difficulty is the failure of maximum principle, which also linked with the first difficulties in some sense. The maximum principle failed because we can't control infinity. We, that's why uh, the theory is uh, very difficult and so far not fully developed. Okay, the basic maximum principle is is not working at all without any assumption further. Okay. Okay, but nonetheless, we we are able to uh, uh, overcome some of the difficulties. Okay, for this is uh, uh, this is the existing theory with an effective estimate proved by myself and Topping. Okay, we consider the same assumption but without the pick two condition. Okay. We consider complete non compact manifolds, uh, dimension bigger than two. And if dimension is three, then this is a rigid condition. And if dimension is higher, then we replace it by the generalization called the pick one. Okay. If we have the pick one pinch condition for some epsilon uniformly on whole manifold M, then we can find the rigid flow solution on M cos zero infinity such that. Okay, the pinching is still almost preserved. Okay, we replace it by a slightly smaller epsilon, but uniform. Okay, but uniform. Okay, uniform only depending on the epsilon log and the dimension here. Okay, it's still pick one pinch. And more importantly, the curvature is scaling invariant. Okay. More than, first of all, the curvature start, suddenly become bounded. Secondly, the curvature is scaling invariant. So, in the sense that if you rescale it, Parabolic, okay. If you apply the parabolic rescaling on the G, on GT, then the same the the, the new Richard flow solution will be still as uh, uh, satisfying the same assumption. Uh, sorry, the same conclusion, okay. And more importantly, the long flatness at some point will be visualized by the flow instantaneously by the scalar curvature. This is a strong maximum principle argument. And fourth, if we have a stronger condition on the initial data, then it will re remain the stronger condition. Okay, so this is our, our main, main contribution to this area. Okay, but why this is important? I, I, you can see that I emphasize one, two, really a lot. The reason why this is important because uh, like I said, the one and two is scaling invariant. So that means uh, if we scale the manifold, everything is the same. So going back to uh, going back to the strategy here, you can see that okay, here we are simply applying the parabolic rescaling on the Richard flow. So for if, for if you have Richard flow satisfying our conclusion, then you can consider the GK Richard flow, which is still a Richard flow because of a parabolic rescaling, and the initial data will be scaled by K, okay. Which is closer and closer to the to the metric cone. And then the estimate are the same. Okay, the estimate are the same. So that eventually G infinity T, if you are able to pass it to Lehman, and the G infinity will be the switch flow solution from the metric cone at infinity. Okay, from the metric cone at infinity. Okay. Okay, this is one of the importance of this. Uh, Scaly invariant structure, and that this gives you the regularity for the metrical and infinity, roughly speaking. Okay. Okay, this is uh, what I have said before. We have sort of system theory, not relying on the classical theory. We just construct by hand. Secondly, we have the preservation of curvature. Uh, uh, yeah. And then the pinching curvature is also preserved. Okay, and fourthly, we know the code is bounded instantaneously after it evolved. Okay, and more importantly, the estimate scaling invariant so that what I said is uh, possible. And then the CO for T curvature decay is modeling the metrical and infinity after we scaling. Okay. okay, this is basically what I just said, roughly speaking. Okay. okay. Okay, and then the more principle now is the following. So we know the Richard flow, uh, the reason why the third is important, I emphasize 
the curvature preserving is important with the decay condition is important. Why? Because now this is also skinny invariant. The, which the curvature printing is also skinny invariant. So that means the Ricci flow now can be, after rescaling, can be viewed as a metric which is flow from a metric cone with the pinching curvature. Okay. The, you know now we know the we want to study the metric cone at infinity. So we just regularize it by the Ricci flow, obtained by rescaling our solution. And then the Ricci flow from the metric cone is a smoothing of the metric cone, which still have the same properties, the pinching properties. Okay. So the moral idea now is, is to prove that the Ricci flow from, from the metric cone with the pinching condition will be flat and then forcing the original manifold to be flat. Okay. This is the moral principle, like John Knox's idea. Okay. And then, uh, uh, of course, uh, we model a lot of technicality, but the argument can be made regular by uh, Simon Brando's uh, Lee Yao's Hamilton Hana in court. Okay. We, we make use of Simon Brando's uh, Hana's inequality to make to make uh, make make the above idea regulars. Okay, make the above idea regulars. Okay, so the importance of metric cone is this is basically the model of the shrinking sort. Of, oh, sorry, the expanding sort. Of. Okay, but this is uh, another story. Okay. So let me say a few words about the uh, construction, the idea of the construction. Okay. Uh, the idea of, of constructing the long time solution is constructed by the following local construction of which flow. So by local, I mean, we need a quantified estimate for, the, for everything, okay? So because everything is scaling invariant and we eventually want our estimate to be uh, Scaling invariant, so it suffices to work on a unit ball. Okay, we work on a unit two ball, two unit ball again. Okay, so on the, on the unit ball, we have assumption, and then we can prove that uh, for a uniform amount of time and uniform estimate a and epsilon, we have the Ricci flow solution on a strictly smaller ball from zero to t with the scaling invariant estimate and the almost pinching condition. Okay, almost changing or you we need to uh, sacrifice by uh, identity by by a one basically okay that means it's almost pinching okay almost pinching the reason why you have an almost pinch you you need to impose some almost pinching because uh, you need to make uh, you need to pay the cost when you localize it okay the reason if, if you if you if you are not localizing it I mean, by, by not localizing it, I mean by taking two to infinity, then the one here will be gone. Okay. The, the more idea is technical, but the idea is uh, simply saying that the idea is to prove the second part, okay, the almost pinching, which basically says that on the really high curvature region, okay, the metric will just like the sphere. Okay, so if, if, if the Richard flow, Globally uh, uh, defined on a on a region or on a long compact manifold, and then suppose you have some somewhere which is of really high curvature, then if we scale it, it will look like a sphere. Okay, by sphere I mean you just close it up on a really high curvature region. It will close up really quickly to a sphere. Okay, that means that uh, that region will be isolated, which is not possible. If a, if a metric is like just like a sphere at some part, some particular region, then, then the manifold will be closing up right there, which is not possible because I know we assume the manifold will be connected long compact. Okay. Okay. But this uh this is what be the idea. So okay. And then uh before before I we end. Let me uh, raise some question, which is related to uh, related to this uh, talk. So, uh, like I said, uh, we expect that the take two condition is is only technical reason, 
and we expect that the if we know the pick, pick one is pinched, that is sufficiently uh, good enough to say that the manifold is flat. Okay. And then in this in when n is free, it is true by uh by uh our our work with uh Felix uh Darrell and Simons. I mean a, a mixture of our result. Okay. And I also want to mention that uh we can ask the same question for Kayla analog. Okay, we can ask the same if, if by replacing the pick one, pick two condition by the bisessional curvature condition, which is uh, also very strong in the in terms of the uniformization field. And this the direct analog is not is also unknown for now. Okay, there are some results, but not not as strong as the pinching theorem that we stated. Okay. And perhaps uh, this is uh, one of the uh, key intermediate steps, which uh, you can think of it as a generalization of a Wixchen and Yao theorem, which says that, okay, in three dimension, we know pick positive Wixchen curvature is implying the diffeomorphic type. Can we do the same thing for higher dimension? Okay, so you can see that um, uh, the pick one condition share a lot of uh, important. Uh, uh, properties as the Ritchie curvature. When you reduce back to Ritchie curvature, uh, Ritchie curvature in three dimension, we have a lot of classification or, or topological consequence. And then in high dimension, we have some, but not a full story yet. So uh, that's why we should ask the same question. And, and then Peter Topping believed that uh, the pick one condition is the is the correct generalization of Ritchie curvature in view of all this uh, classification field of in three dimension. Okay, and then it may be a possible direction in the future. So I'm not sure. But anyway, this is uh, what I want to share today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Minchuan. And uh, so we have some time to have free discussions. So any question, comments from the audience? So you can you can ask question directly or just uh, put the question in the chat room. Perhaps I skip too many details. <laughs> well, suppose that there are many experts in, in, the, in the audience <laughs> in geometric analysis. Yeah. So let me ask one question. So under this uh, can the essential condition. So the rich flow essentially in your case there's no singularity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the reason is that your construction of local solution really skinny variant. So you you can from from this local theory you can get to the global theory directly, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so 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 you 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 completely avoid this uh, uh, Xiong Shi's uh, local theory, which and which 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 have to assume the curvature is bounded. Yeah, yeah, excited. Yeah, excited. I see. I, see. Uh, I think there's a, there's a question in chat room. Does nobody have a question? So the dangerous <laughs> question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 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 you know, in general case, the rich flow, uh, because as you said, is is only weakly parabolic and uh, is quasi linear. So you you might have singularity in long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so this condition you put this uh, CPA C one. So you you think that this is really essential condition, which makes sure there is no singularity for, form in finite time. Yeah, but this is a uh, really. I mean, uh, this is very special. Only Taylor make for this particular question. I mean, uh, yeah, it. It always case by case. As to my understanding, which flow theory, which flow existence theory is also is always case by case study for now. So different different structure may reflect different different estimate, and then this turn out to turn out to be useful for us at this moment for this particular question. But that for for example, if you think about if you study the Kela case and. Then, then it's not reasonable to to study these uh, types of assumption if you study the Kähler Kähler flow. 
Okay, you should expect some Kähler, more Kähler, more Kähler condition. Oh, then, then there are some, some cases you can study, but certainly not pick one, not totally unrelated to the pick one. Yeah, so it's hard to say which one is the, you, there, I, I, to my, at least uh, I would say there are no you know, universal theorem for now, except for she's theorem. Okay. There are no universal types of conditioning. Yeah. Okay. So any further question, comments? I think people are proud with to chat with you in the chat room, in the coffee hour. So, okay. so if no more questions, let's thank Mentor again for the very beautiful, clear lecture. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you. Very interesting talk. Yeah, very, very nice talk. Yes. Okay, so each of you has received actually a link to the coffee break in the reminder email of this Zoom session. Please join us and uh, then you can ask a lot of personal questions and also related to this talk. Okay, I see you in the, hopefully all in the coffee break. Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. I will close this session now. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.